Hi guys! Welcome to my channel. This is Crafting with Natalia. My name is Natalia and this is Saturday afternoon when I'm starting to film this video. I'm not sure if I will end it. I feel like it may be kind of broken into pieces a little bit and then I'll patch it together uh, because this is more of a longer kind of video slash project that I wanted to try and record. Um, so basically, I was recently tagged by Rachel, the Ditsy Diamond Painter, in a crafty tag. Uh, so there's quite a few questions uh, that basically, well, if you're tagged or even if you're not tagged, you could still record a video and answer those questions. Um, as a creator or as a crafter, you can go ahead and, and just answer even some of them. Uh, so for me, because I was tagged and because I thought maybe it would be a fun thing to do uh, since, um, well, lately I've had, you know, quite a big increase in subscribers. So a lot of you are new to my channel, so maybe you don't know me so well. Uh, so it may be a nice way of, of just getting me to know a little bit better and just having a little bit of a different kind of a video on this channel. Uh, so I thought maybe I'll work on a project and as I work on it, I could answer some of these questions. Uh, from the crafty tag okay uh, so thank you so much Rachel for the tag I will link Rachel's channel below as well uh, she's a diamond painter as, as her channel name suggests <laughs> so she's a diamond painter she diamond paints a lot and she diamond paints super fast and it's uh, really fun to see the different project that she's working on as well so if you're into diamond painting I recommend that you check out her channel as well Okay, uh, but so you may be wondering, okay, what is this? Uh, what is this? This is something different. Um, so as you know, my channel is mainly about cross stitch and diamond painting, though lately I have been doing much less diamond painting than in the past. Hopefully I will get back to it as well, but there are just too many things I'm trying to do at the same time. Um, but one of the things I recently picked up that's a little bit different um, is, uh, well, I came across this company which is called Rwandian Embroidery. Uh, they don't sp sponsor me or anything like that. I, I don't think they know about my channel or about my videos. Um, I don't know, they may come across this video at some point and if, if they do, hello, thank you so much for the lovely kids that you're making. Uh, but I really came across this company completely by accident. Uh, I found them on Lovecraft, Lovecraft UK, which is an online store in the UK where you can buy all sorts of crafty things. And basically Lovecraft ha recently had a sale for embroidery kits and because I've been curious about embroidery kits for a while um, I just had a look to see what's on sale and I found one of their kits on sale and well actually I should maybe show you that one just in case if you haven't seen my recent floss tube I will go and grab it and show you guys Okay, so the project from Rwandian Embroidery that I actually completed working on recently uh, was the Sea Urchin Kit, uh, which I thought also would be really nice uh, since I'm currently um, doing this hashtag, which is all things sea craft along, that you are also welcome to join. It's a hashtag all about crafting things related to the sea, as uh, so I thought this one would really work well uh, with that hashtag. Uh, and it was, you know, the sale was really good. I think it was like 30% off or something. So I went ahead and I bought it. And I completed this, although it's not properly finished. So I don't really, I need to get a better hoop for it. I want to finish it in a hoop. And at the moment, I just have this old hoop that I use to work on my projects sometimes. Uh, but actually, it should be, I would like to get a nicer hoop with, uh, I actually saw these hoops with like turquoise edge and then you can also get a backing for the hoop so i'd like to do that but i haven't bought that yet so for now it's still in this one and this is uh, this is the sea urchin <laughs> so as you see these kits are really interesting and i'm i really i had so much fun working on this uh so as you can see we have lots of different components uh so we have like these big beads and we have like seashells that are like sparkling and then we have yeah we have like some fabric that you can fill in with some stuffing and then you, you use embroidery thread and also some beads to make it look a bit like a sea urchin it does also of course there's, there's um this variegated embroidery thread in here to make these um these kind of plants and some more kind of beads and shiny things to put around and like these these kind of wooden beads as well uh, so you've got all sorts of different things these are some french knots that you also do with with embroidery thread so you do all sorts of different um 
Oh, another thing that you have. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to mention it. See here, in the where the 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 C, the bottom of the C is, uh, you have also these. Um, there's like a type of. I'm not sure if it's wool or I think it's wool or some sort of some of wool, uh, which is like curly kind of wool. Uh, so it's and then you can like curl it around. Like you can like make a coil with it and curl it around the bottom, so it looks like um like it's like seagrass or something or like some sort of moss. Uh, and then also you have this like fluffy, fluffy blue wool that you can put at the bottom that mimics water. So I thought that was really, really cool. I've, I've never seen personally anything like that. Uh, so I was very excited to, to see this and to work with all these different components. And it's much simpler than it looks. Uh, so oh, another thing I didn't mention, see here at the back, you also have this like um, fabric that is very delicate, um, sort of half transparent fabric um, which is called organza uh, so you have some blue organza and some green organza and you can use it to create background color uh, which i also thought was a really cool idea and you also have some metallic metallic thread uh, that's going on here uh, so that was really really fun and yeah i really enjoyed working with all those different components and i've never come across anything like this uh, so I got hooked on these kits um, and recently because now I'm traveling um, to where my husband is in Albania and I'm meeting his family I thought that it would be really nice to make one of these kits and uh, maybe perhaps give it as a gift um, as well so I thought why don't I since I I found this this kit that I really liked um, so my husband's mom uh, she has a garden and she li really likes gardening and this is a garden gate and I thought it's a really nice design because it's very colorful and I think she really likes colors from what, what he was saying. Uh, she's a very colorful, uh, very happy lady. Uh, and there's a lot of pinks and greens and blues in this one and there's a lot of different textures as well. So I thought that could be a really nice kit to work on. And I thought I could maybe show you bits of it. Of course, it will take a long time. It, it will take a few hours um, before I finish this. So these kits, they don't take like a very long time. But of course, you know, it, you still have to make all the different things. But this, this one that I just showed you, that one I managed to finish in. So I started it on one evening and I maybe worked on it three hours on that evening. Um, and then I finished it the next day. Uh, maybe that was another two or three hours. Uh, so, you know, between five and six hours, I could finish this. So, of course, I'm not going to be able to show you all the five or six hours that it may take to finish this. But I could just show you different bits and pieces. And every maybe every time I find something useful for you to see or something interesting to show you, I could also answer some tag questions. Um, I don't know. I thought maybe I could do something like that. I'm not sure how it's going to work. Maybe it's a silly idea, um, but it's kind of like a whip and chat. Um, if you're a diamond painter, then you're familiar with whip and chats when somebody's working on a project and you can work alongside on your project. And it's just more like a podcast kind of thing when somebody's talking a little bit about their life and about what they're working on and, and about like some so, so, you know, in, in this case, I'll be answering some questions just to give you background. If In case if you're working on your project and you're just looking for some company, I can be your friends today just answering these questions and showing you this kit, which I'm very excited about. And I will unpack it with you and uh, and we can talk about it a little bit together. So one thing that you may see, uh, actually, I've already unpacked it before this video. And the reason for that was because um, I want to put this, uh, once it's finished, I want to put it in a square frame. And I bought this frame just of um, eBay um, in, yeah, just, just of UK eBay. Uh, it arrived really quickly, just within a couple of days from ordering. Uh, you can see this, this is the, the seller uh, information on here, just in case if you're interested, but they don't give you the eBay um the ebay name i think it's something i don't know i can't remember but if i if i find it i will put it on the screen what the name of the shop on ebay is uh, but it was very cheap and uh, it was um, it arrived very quickly, uh, but really the idea is just I thought I wanted something with a mount. I think that would look really nice when it's finished in like a square. Um, I know that here it's finished in round, but I think there's no reason why it couldn't be finished in a square. And and with a mount, it's, it has this nice kind of finish. I thought in case if I do want to make it into a gift, that would look really nice. Uh, but so because of that, I wanted to make sure that this actually fits well into the frame. 
and I also wanted to make sure that when I stitch it I don't go beyond the um, the margin of the frame right so here we've got the mount and you can see so this is um I think it's five by five inches that I went for. Yes, yeah, so this is seven. The frame itself is seven by seven. The inside here is five by five. So I took out the mount and I just put it on top of this uh, just to have an idea how big that is. And I basically, I, I just stuck my pencil just underneath the mount. So so this, this once it's finished, you won't see that pencil mark. It, it goes underneath the, mar the mount, but it gives me idea how big the mount is. Uh, so this is so, so I know that there's a couple of millimeters, uh, you know, before the pencil mark starts that I should not be stitching on <laughs> because that will not be visible. So that just gives me an idea. And um, because one thing about these kits um, is that you have rough guidelines. So as you can see, so this is the fabric that came with the kit. And is this it's this kind of canvas fabric It's a little bit different to what I had in the C fabric in the C in the C project, I had this fabric which is more like a soft kind of canvas, and it's uh, it's got a different color. Yeah, it's very kind of brownish. It's kind of like a roll roll linen, but it's a much softer, a bit more fuzzy kind of fabric. This one is more like a traditional canvas. Um, I don't know how much you can see. It feels like kind of thick linen. Um, yeah, I think it may be linen. I'm not sure, uh, but it's a and it's a kind of beige color as well. But where was I going with this? I forgot now. <laughs> oh yes, oh yes. So what I was going to say is that you do have like printed lines. Yes, so so you have the, um, the diagram which kind of shows you where things should be going, right, on here. But if you look at the actual, like, like what it should look like at the end, the image here, it doesn't, like this drawing here only shows you some of it, but it doesn't show you exactly where every single thing is going. Uh, so, and, and what I found with my C project was actually that when I was working on it, this is actually quite different from what was um, suggested. Uh, so I will try and find a picture and insert here from what they, uh, they kind of suggested on the cover. But I kind of went uh, in my own direction a little bit um, and I improvised a little bit and this is quite a bit different to what was on the cover of the kit. So there is room uh, for interpretation, there's room for creativity, uh, so you can go ahead and kind of make it your own. But just because, you know, after working on this, I realized that I've, I've probably made it a bit bigger than it should have been. To avoid making the same error here, I wanted to make sure that I don't go too far so, so that I stick to the frame size. Uh, so that's why I've drawn this square here, just to give me indication where things should be going. Um, okay, so that's, that's me talking about this. Uh, so now maybe I can show you what's inside of, of this kit that I haven't taken out. So I've basically, I've just taken the fabric out uh, just to do this, but I've left everything else inside and I can show you guys now all the different components from that kit. I hope this is not too boring for you. Um, I thought, you know, just at the start I can show you this in case you are interested to try uh, something like this if you've never done it before you've never seen these kids before um, I thought you may be interested to see it and after I show you this then I'm going to start answering some of these tag questions as I maybe try and work out you know the first step of working on this so in the back here you can see all the different components okay so I'm just gonna take it out like this uh, I'm gonna put my other kit away so that I have lots of room in here to lay things aside okay so there's a few things you get in these kits so one thing remember I mentioned that very thin transparent fabric and uh, that's the organza fabric and we have a few different colors that come with this kit and uh, we actually have four different colors okay so I, I may place them on the fabric so you can see them so we have this lovely yellow organza um, we have this kind of orangey brown organza. Um, actually, there's five. I thought it was four, but it's actually five. We have this light green. Yeah, and we have this darker green, which now looks like blue because I've put it on yellow. <laughs> but yeah, but so we have, yeah, we have like this lighter green, uh, darker green, and then we have this very light blue organza. 
So actually, I didn't realize there were so many different colors of organza coming with this kit and I'm not actually sure where they're all going to go. So I'm quite curious. I'm guessing the blue one will go for the sky, which would be really nice. And then, well, the, there will be some green, I'm sure, in the bottom, and, but I don't know where they're all going to go. <laughs> but anyway, so this is the organza. I'm just going to put them aside for now uh, so I can show you the other things. I'm just finding these things so cool. It's so exciting. Like It's like opening like a Christmas gift, you know, all these different things, bits and pieces. So another thing that you can see, we have all these different beads and sparkly like seconds. Um, so... So yes, you have these like purple and pink, I, f I think they're called sequins, sequins? I don't know, sequin in Polish, um, <laughs> because I'm Polish, so I'm sorry if I'm struggling with some English words. Um, there's also like these little blue beads and lots of little pink beads of different shades of pink. Uh, so it's a nice variety of beads. Some of them are these longer kind of beads, some of them are just round beads and they're different sizes, different shades, so that's very exciting. Okay, another thing I found is this piece of pink fabric that's kind of like a satin, yeah, or maybe silk, I don't know. It's a very nice piece of fabric, okay, so it's it's nice bright pink. And then we have all the threads, okay. So in this case we have 15 different types of threads and you can see that they're all, so, so they're all kind of different. So we have, okay, so here in the middle, I recognize these because I've had them in my C kit. Uh, so these are actually DMC color variation threads. So they're just DMC cotton threads. I think this one is also DMC cotton thread. And I'm guessing these ones here are also DMC cotton threads. This last one here, last time I used um, to attach the beads. So it's this very, very fi thin, thin kind of thread, uh, which I assume is for beading. Um, it's kind of, it doesn't feel like cotton. It feels like some other kind of material. Then we have this is really funky one, like this um, wavy curly type of thread which I don't know what that's called if you if you know what this is please let me know guys uh, because this reminds me it's quite similar to that green one that I showed you in the sea um, in the bottom of the sea that I was using to coil around the sea urchin and I thought it was super cool but I don't know what this actually is what type of thread that is so please let me know if you know this is a metallic thread probably metallic DMC I think by the looks of it and it's a green one Okay, and then here at the start we have, so I think this is another DMC thread, uh, or just a cotton six-stranded thread. Uh, but these ones here, like one, two, and four, they're kind of like yarn kind of texture, yeah? So they, they're more, they're thicker and more fuzzy. Yes, I'm not sure if that's wool of some or some other material, but so we have different textures, different types of threads in here, which is very exciting as well. And a lovely color palette, no? Look at that, guys. That is so pretty. Okay. And then finally, they also give us instruction sheet. Now, this is not like cross stitch. Uh, I have to say, this is... Um, not really, I wouldn't say it's like showing you the pattern in this case, because there is no pattern. You just have these written instructions that tell you what to do with the kit, uh, but actually it's not a pattern. It's, it's just really guidance for what you do with these threads and the fabrics that they supplied. So I don't really feel uh, like I don't, I can't show you this uh, because there isn't anything here that's like, you know, protected, I don't think. It's really, I think, to work on these kits, you really need to buy them uh, to have all these different components um, you know and, and that's the whole point of having these embroidery kits that somebody put all this stuff together for you and gave you the instructions um, so I think that's you know it's really cool that they do it I, th I think it's super exciting that they offer that but there's no pattern as such in here um, yeah, so they show you do uh, uh, some things like how to make French knots uh, because here again you'll have lots of French knots and in, going in these flowers here um, and they also, so so yes, yeah, so it's really just one page of instructions for how to do things. And here you can see where all these different organza fabrics will be going. And I think they advise you to pin it. Uh, so I need to get my pins as well uh, before you sew it on. 
uh, with a thread um, it's good practice to like to pin it first so that you know where everything's going and so you can see yes the blue one goes where the sky was and the green one is kind of covering the bottom of the piece the light green and then the yellow and the darker green and the um, because it was fine, no? So was, there must be also, I, I guess maybe, so what I noticed with the C kit actually that was really interesting is that the components that I got with the kit were slightly different to what was on that front cover. And even here, see, there's no blue in the sky. So they may have made some changes or maybe they're including different bits depending on what they have in stock in store uh, but so maybe even the colors of organza that you get can be slightly different from kit to kit or the types of beads that you will get can be different from kit to kit but i think that's actually really nice as well because again that makes the kit your own and that gives you a bit of um like you know opportunity to use your creativity to make this design really your own and to, to use what you have um, in a creative way um, to make something that resembles what's on the front cover. Anyway, so that's enough of me talking about all these different components. Now, I'm, I think what I'm going to do is now try and pin this organza um, so you know kind of plan where the organza bits will be going and as I play around with it a little bit I may try and answer the first couple of questions so let, let's see what's the first question on the list of the crafty tag okay <laughs> Okay, so I just had a quick read of the instructions. Um, I just, I glimpsed, uh, so I read the first few and gl glimpsed at the rest to have an idea what's happening. Um, so the, the instructions for the kids start also with the organza, which makes sense because you need to put your background first, um, especially the, the big background. So, so, cause you'll be working on this in sections, um, but you, of course you need to have the green bit at the bottom to start attaching things at the bottom as well. Um, so the first two bits of organza that I'm going to place is the blue one on top and I'm going to pin it and then I'm going to have to secure it with thread and I think the way I'll do it I'll just stitch around my square that I um, uh, I earlier marked with my pencil I will just stitch on that with um, with one of the threads so I think they actually so they suggested doing it in a circle and they said um, that I can, yeah, I can just, um, they say tack a circle around the design to make it easier to get a finished round shape. That They don't specify what, um, you know, how to do it exactly, but I may just use one of these threads. Um, so they give you lots of excess threads as well from what I found before. Uh, so just with one strand of thread, I will just um, stitch around the edges um, just to attach this organza uh, to top and the bottom. Okay, so as I'm pinning the organza, the first question on my list is when did you start crafting and why? Okay, so that's a very interesting question. When did I start crafting and why? Um, because when, I'm not sure about when and when I should say that the start point was. Um, I started crafting when I was a kid, technically. So my mom, my mom is a very crafty person. Uh, she does um, sewing, so she used to actually make clothes, so, so you know, my parents lived in communism times and in communism times you couldn't really buy very many things in the shops, they were pretty empty. Uh, so what women did, they, they used to make their own clothes a lot. Um, so, so my mom, as, as most women back then, um, used to sew her clothes as, and she was very good at that. Um, and then uh, she also used to... Um, uh, like uh, she used to knit, uh, she, so she made a lot of knitted products like sweaters and, and hats and whatnot, you know, all sorts of knitty things. And so, uh, so yeah, so she, she was always very crafty and, and she can make a lot of things from nothing. She, because she, that's what they had to do back in the day. And she used to also make things like for Christmas, like Christmas decorations and stuff. And I remember one time, um, one year, uh, she actually made, a, a, what do you call it? Like, you know, that barn that uh, Jesus was um, born. Um, so, so basically for one Christmas, she made like, we had these figurines uh, that you could make from clay. And we had like these forms that you could fill with clay and then bake them and then paint them. And so for them to have like a house, 
uh, she would put them, uh, she would basically uh, make, actually she would make like the, the barn, let's say, um, from, basically I think it was from cardboard uh, and then she stuck um, matches, like, you know, burnt matches on top and she basically made it from matches and that was super, super cool. I think we still have it somewhere in, in the basement or somewhere, it's hiding somewhere around the house. But it was a really cool thing and she spent, you know, days working on it. Uh, but it was so nice in the end. And I just painted these little figurines and that was our, like, decoration. Um, and it even, she even uh, put a light in it so you could, like, press a button and then it would lit up. Um, so that was super, super cool. Uh, so I remember doing, her doing that and I remember that she always used to help me like when I had any school projects and I had to actually make something for a school uh, she would always help me do that and she was really good at doing things and I was never really good at DIY I was you know I didn't really know what to do and how to make things uh, but then also I was a kid so I don't think when you're a kid you, you you're so good normally at that I, I don't know <laughs> but anyway so she used to uh, yeah so she used to be very crafty and I would watch her be crafty and at some point, um, well, she quite often went to this uh, shop with all the like um, threads and, you know, sewing uh, things that she needed for her projects. Uh, and so when we were there, there were some like um, cross stitch canvas that you could get there. And so at some point we, we got, uh, she got me this printed canvas and it came with a legend with the thread numbers on it. And so um, from that um, I tried, I had an attempt at cross stitch, though I didn't really do cross stitch as such. It was more like half cross stitch. And um, I showed it on my last floss tube actually, if you wanted to see what I mean. Um, but basically I did have attempts at cross stitch when I was very young. So, well, very young. I think I was maybe like nine or I don't know something right eight, eight or nine years old I'm not sure but so that's what I did when I was a kid uh, so technically technically I was you know I did start crafting fair, fairly early on in my life um but it wasn't until like later later on in life that I actually properly started crafting uh, so so yeah so I only really got back into crafting uh, maybe when I was well when COVID started so I did have some moments so so when I so initially I used to live in Edinburgh like when I moved to UK I used to live in Edinburgh for like eight eight years or maybe nine years um, so for a long time and I was always very like I did a lot of music um, so I play violin and so I, I used to play in a lot of concerts I used to I, I was with a lot of orchestras and I used to play at weddings and stuff so I didn't really have time for other things but then I moved to Cambridge in the south of England and um, that really changed my life um, because um, the music community there wasn't so big. I was living on the countryside, so it was kind of hard to, to join orchestras. Uh, it was much more difficult. So I kind of took a break from performing music. And so because I took that break from performing, uh, that gave me the kind of opened up time for other things in my life. Um, and I used to do a lot of like jigsaw puzzles, but that was kind of boring after a while. And then occasionally like I would go to like a shop um, and see something like, for example, like um, kids, cross stitch kids to make bookmarks um, or like small embroidery kits. And I did a couple of these things. So I did make a bookmark, a cross stitch bookmark, and I did work on like an embroidery kit. Uh, so, so I did try some crafting, but not properly, I think, until COVID started. And then I was bored at home. Um, and actually I was um, looking at some things on Instagram and that's really how it all started. Yeah, so that's really how it all started for me um, with Instagram ad, which was advertising diamond painting. And I got really interested in diamond painting, really curious. I ended up grabbing a bigger pair of scissors um, to cut through my or organza, the blue organza. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, so what was I saying? Sorry, I was concentrating on the cutting and I, I will anyway overlap this um, audio on a sped up video, I think. So probably what you're seeing is different to what I'm talking about, but I was trying to cut the organza and I got really concentrated on that. But so back to my story. Uh, when COVID started, I saw the inst uh, an ad on Instagram, which was advertising diamond painting, which got me really curious about diamond painting. And so I decided to try diamond painting and I ordered my first diamond painting kit from Amazon, which wasn't the greatest kit in the world, I have to say it. Uh, but it was just a small diamond painting just to try out how it uh, works and if I like it. Um, sorry, I'm just moving the organza a little bit. Okay, moved it slightly down to cover. Yeah, maybe like this. <laughs> yes, so when I was, um, yes, so so when COVID started, uh, I tried diamond painting and I fell in love with diamond painting and that was kind of my first intro to crafting properly. So, so that was when I actually started, like you can officially say I became a crafter. And the first craft that I did properly get into, that was diamond painting. Uh, cross stitch came later. Uh, because I was watching some diamond painting channels on YouTube and as I was watching them I discovered that um, well a lot of a lot of diamond painters actually mentioned cross stitch and occasionally I would bump into these um, some sort of floss tube videos or something I got curious uh, and I thought maybe one day I could try cross stitch again and see what it's like maybe I will actually like it this time so it was on my mind but I didn't try it for probably about a year or over a year, it was before I tried my first cross stitch kit. Okay, so now that I've pinned my organza, um, I will just stitch it with my threads, just to attach it to my fabric. Uh, so that's what I'm doing now. Okay, so one thing I forgot to mention is in the kit they supply two needles, but I forgot that they supply needles. Uh, I only just remembered it now. Uh, so I grabbed one of my own needles because I've got plenty of them. But they supply one needle with a big ear for all the different types of threads that you have in the kit. And they also supply one that's got a very small ear, it's a very narrow needle. And that one is for the beading, uh, for, for putting the beads on. And because it's got such a small ear, that's how I figured out that I have to use this very small, that, that last thread, it's a very, very thin thread. Uh, because when I tried using cotton thread, I couldn't actually get it through this ear. So, so but that last thread, the, the thin thread worked really well for putting the beads last time when I did it. Uh, but I'm just going to put them aside for now. I, because I already grabbed my own needle. Uh, so I'm going to now stitch my organza on with this needle uh, and then continue answering my tag as I do it. Now again, I may need to speed this bit up um, to include um, everything on the video. I will try to record most of what I'm doing uh, on the screen. And then some bits, I think basically what you see on the screen may not match exactly what I'm saying because I think I may speed up some of the video and just show you the interesting bits in more detail. Uh, so we're just going to have to see how we roll. This is very improvised <laughs> as my working on this kid, like what I'm doing here is also very improvised. But I thought it would just be nice to do it together and I will try and patch it into one sensible video at the end. Hopefully it will still work out. <laughs> Let's see, let's see. Okay, but so I've got my needle here and I'm just gonna very roughly stitch stitch this organza on. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time doing that. Okay, uh, but what I was saying is that, um, yes, that I only started cross stitch. When did I start cross stitch? Uh, maybe, mm, I think it was November, not last year, but the year before. So that was, was what year was it? 2020, no? Yeah, that was 2020. Uh, so yes, yeah, so in November 2020, I picked up cross stitch and I, um, well, initially I just completed one small kit and then after that I tried stitching something else and eventually I got really addicted to it uh, and now I do a lot of cross stitch. But I also, as you see, I like trying other, other crafts. Um, I would say, so I think the second question, um, well, no, I've already answered. So when I look at the tag, what is your earliest memory of crafting? So I think I've already answered that. Uh, but then there's also a question, what is your favorite type of craft? 
Uh, so that is a really hard question for me to answer because I think that evolves over time. So, so the earliest, um, my kind of the favorite, the fav my first favorite craft was diamond painting, but now I think that switched to cross stitch. Um, I'm also doing a little bit of crochet, but I wouldn't say that's my favorite craft because I'm, I'm not very good at it. <laughs> So that can be my favorite. Um, but so yeah, but I do do a bit of crochet. But but yeah, so my favorite at the moment I would say is cross stitch. But that's not to say that if you ask me again in a in a couple of years or even in a few months, you know, maybe I'll the answer will be slightly different as well. So so it kind of depends on the time in life, I think, like what it is that you really want to be doing. And uh, you know, we all change our like kind of it depends where you are, what you want to do. And you may kind of also get get bored of tired or tired of one thing, uh, so you may want to try other crafts at other points in life. Uh, so this is a very evolving question, I would say. But at the moment, I would say my favorite craft is cross stitch. Okay, so the next question. Sorry about the noise in the background. That's some kids playing in outside. Uh, it's a lovely day here in London, so that's why I'm gonna take a break soon and I'm gonna go out um, and do other things. Uh, but um, j I just wanted to get this video started um, now because I know it's going to take a while to record the whole thing and I, I can't really do it in one go anyway. But so just this is just the beginning. But so sorry about the background noise if you hear any. Uh, I've got my windows open. It's very warm today. Um, but yes, so the next question is what is the best completion so far this year? So what, what have you completed this year that was like your favorite thing to complete? And I actually, I should have really thought about what's the answer for that because I actually don't, can't think of anything now. Uh, <laughs> I always struggle, you know, when people ask me questions like that, I always struggle to find the answer quickly. And then now like I panic and I, I can't think of anything I completed this year. Um, I haven't actually had that many finishes this year. I think in terms of diamond painting, uh, in January or was it early February, maybe it was early February that I completed and the Matt Kitty, I really enjoyed working on Matt Kitty. Actually, that was like my favorite diamond painting in a while that I worked on, Matt Kitty. Um, so I would say in terms of diamond painting, that was probably my favorite diamond painting that I completed so far. Uh, there's some that I'm working on that I, I really love, um, but because I haven't completed them, I don't think they count. Um, so once I complete them, maybe they will become my favorite. We will see. Um, in terms of cross stitch, I haven't had that many finishes. Um, so probably, uh, I think Mary Amelia's bird, um, which I will try and, well, I will try and insert first of all, a picture from Matt Kitty, um, which is the, the diamond painting that I completed. And then for cross stitch, I will try and insert a picture for Mary Amelia's bird, which I think was my favorite cross stitch project that I completed at least this year, but I again, I haven't had that many uh, completions, but I really, really loved working on that project and I also really, really loved how it looked when it was finished. Uh, so that may be my, my favorite completion this year. Um, I haven't really had a good crochet completion just yet this year, I think, so I can't really have a favorite for that. I'm, I think I only completed my rainbow goat this year. Uh, so, so maybe that and I do I wasn't particularly proud of my rainbow goat but I have a crochet project on the go the, the crabby crab the <laughs> crabby mac crabby or crabby mac cookie crab which everybody is loving I think um so I think once he is completed he will be my favorite crochet completion for the year and I really really enjoyed working on that embroidery kit that I showed you so that's also one of my favorite completions this year so that's a lot of favorites because I really struggle to ever pick favorite be between my projects. I love a lot of them. Um, so, you know, so I, I don't want to pick favorites. You know, I want to give them all some love. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> that's I guess that's my answer. OK. Um, and then best item purchased so far this year. OK, that's hard. That's hard because I buy a lot of stuff and half of the time I don't even remember what I buy and when I buy it as well. I haven't really been buying diamond paintings lately. I used to buy a lot of diamond paintings and now I have a massive stash of them. Uh, and because of that and also because right now the prices of everything are going really, really high. 
Um, that includes diamond painting, but also just prices of living. Um, you know, currently I just got my new energy bills and uh, <laughs> yeah, they're not good. They're not good, guys. So, so diamond painting buying at the moment has kind of stopped. Um, but I've, I bought a lot of cross stitch supplies this year. Um, so, you know, a lot, but then usually I don't buy kits that very often. I usually just buy like lots of threads and fabrics, um, and all that kind of thing. So I don't know. I don't know what's my favorite. I really, really like that embroidery kit. That was recently, that was my favorite purchase I made. I only paid like around 15 pounds for it, but it gave me so much joy. Honestly, I had so much fun working on it. So maybe that was my favorite purchase. I don't, the, the best value for money purchase. I don't know. <laughs> it's really hard to say guys. So what was my favorite one? I really love buying cross stitch charts, but again, it would be really hard to just pick one favorite one of them because I love so many of them. So I don't know. It's a hard question, guys. I don't know. Maybe it will come to me later. What was my favorite purchase of the year? Okay. Uh, but then now the next question is name something craft related you want to buy in future. Okay. Name something craft related you want to buy in future. Hmm. Okay, well, I have, oh, well, actually, there's <laughs> there's so many things. I mean, my wish lists are like miles long, okay? <laughs> uh, so, so that could go on for a very long time, answer to that question. There are so many things, especially most of them are cross-stitch charts or cross-stitch kits, or um, they are like other cross-stitch supplies, most of them. I also have a very long wish list of diamond paintings I'd love to buy, um, yeah. A lot of them a lot of them are still like earlier kind of diamond paint because recently there's been lots of new releases in diamond painting world but i actually there was some diamond paintings that i really loved when i first started diamond painting and i still haven't bought them um so there's some like diamond art club diamond paintings i would really love to buy um but if we're like asking i don't know like now names of something craft related that you really want to buy in future Again, it's a lot of things, but something that I have sitting in my Amazon basket that I haven't, <laughs> that I still haven't checked out. Um, well, well, there's a lot of things that I there's been sitting in various baskets that I haven't checked out. But um, when I went to Poland recently, and I think that actually also answers another question from this list. So, so another question, which is towards the end of the list, I think, is what crafts. Where is it? I can't find it. <laughs> but I, I think I remember what the what the question was. Um, what craft haven't you tried yet and why? So what what well basically what craft would you like to try but you haven't yet and why? And so this is something new I discovered. Uh, so this is a very very new thing. Uh, but I think this is this is a perfect um, perfect thing to mention and, and for this question is when I was in Poland. Um, so I just came back from traveling in Poland. Well, my family is in Poland, so I went to visit them. And when I was there, me and my mom, we were walking around um, a town, which is like not far from where, where my parents live. Uh, we were looking for some some other things. Uh, basically, I was looking for pajamas because I recently went like last time when I was in Poland, I bought a pajama and I really love that pajama. I was like, mom, do they have any other pajamas like that? And then we were looking for the pajama, which we didn't find in the end, but it was a fun day anyway. Um, but so when we were looking for that pajama, we uh, bumped into a craft store uh, and my mom was like oh do you want to have a look what's in there um and because she knows i like crafting and also because she needed something as well so we went into that craft store but it was mostly there was a lot of like um sewing supplies because i think that's what most people do in poland like there's not so much cra uh, cross stitch or embroidery in poland i wouldn't say uh it's mostly like the practical items for sewing uh, and they also had quite a bit of yarn uh, and like accessories. Um, well, I didn't know really what that what that was at first, but my mom said that right now in popular what's uh, in Poland what's trending was the most popular craft is making macram macram. I don't know how you pronounce it in English, um, but it's these um, these products like how do you describe it? It's like you make it from like um, hmm. it's like a. <laughs> <laughs> this is going so well. 
<laughs> I've forgotten all my words, guys. Give me a minute. I need to look some things up on Google. Okay, so I looked on Google, guys, and it's called macrame in English. Uh, and so macrame is like you make stuff, mainly either decorations, you like hang in your window or in your wall, or like you can also make like plant pots or various like decorative items around the house. You make them from like rope or like, like mm, it's not so much thread, but it's like thick kind of thread. So you basically make knots and you arrange the knots in like a symmetrical kind of geometrical patterns and then you basically knot your your thread or your your lace or the rope or whatever you're using you knot it into these geometrical patterns and you make all these like decorative items and then you know it's it's quite kind of cool so so they had lots of these macrame macrame things hanging around in various shops in poland uh, to buy or you could also buy the supplies to to make the macrame things but at that point, when we were in the shop, I didn't know what all these supplies were. It's only when we left the shop, my mom was like telling me about it. Uh, so I never bought anything in that shop. But they also had all, all these like wooden beads and stuff. Um, and that's uh, apparently that's what they were for. And so once my mom like talked to me about this and like we, I started noticing all these things because they were actually in a lot of shops, like even just generic shops, you could buy these macrame, like let's say like, like the plants, um, plant pot holders or you know or just just like these decorative like kind of they kind of look like the um, the thing that um you find in native america like these um dream catchers uh so you could find like this the big circles to hang on your wall or just like i don't know down from the ceiling so i started noticing them and then i googled it and i i i was kind of curious what else you could make of this um macrame thing and it turns out you can also make like um like for example, what I what I found because of course, like I love like for example when I do crochet, right? I don't really do traditional crochet, but I love amigurumi, so I love making like animals. And I was curious if you can make something like that from macrame, and I found that you can, for example, make a macrame owl, and that got me really interested because because I'd love to have a macrame owl and I'd love to make something like that. It's a new craft. It's something I've never tried before. It looks pretty interesting. Um, and I was like, and also I'd love to make one for my mom because she loves owls. And she was like, oh yeah, you definitely have to make me one like that. It looks really cool. So I'll try and insert a picture here of the type of owls that I found. So there's this shop, um, there was a website, um, which I can't remember the name now. I can try and insert it below as well. Yeah, I'll put it in the description below, link to that website. But I think it's like Love Macrame or something like that. And that designer, um, basically she sells patterns for these owls. And there was like four different types of owls, I think, that you, sh you could get on that website. And there's one that I liked really, I, I think I liked the most, but I really like all of them, to be honest. So I was really curious. But the one that I liked the most actually says it's for beginners. So I thought, well, that's perfect, right? So I am a beginner and I love owls and I really want to try that thing. So I started looking into buying supplies for this and I found some on Amazon that I thought, you know, maybe I could order just from there. Um, and I was going to, but uh, it, you know, it's, they're quite pricey and it was the end of the month and I was like, I will, I will, for an, and I don't have time right now to make the owl anyway. So I put it in my basket and I never checked it out and it's like, I'll come back to it later and eventually I'd want to buy these supplies. But so that's something that I really love to buy that's crafty and I haven't bought before. So that's quite exciting. So maybe, yeah, maybe that answers the question and also the question about what I haven't tried yet and I would really like to try. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's other crafts that will pop up, you know, with time that I will really want to try um, because, um, yeah, I'm really curious about crafting and there's lots of things I'd love to try um some more than others uh but I've, i'm sure there will be other things i'll come across and i'm generally the kind of person if i want to try something i'm not going to wait too long uh so the only reason well yeah i, I know actually what i haven't tried yet which i would really love to try one day is sewing uh so that's the only craft that i've been wanting to try for a longer time but i haven't uh simply because i don't at the moment have capacity like space capacity to to have a sewing machine 
it's just not possible right now for me to have a sewing machine so that's something that i've left for future so in the future i would love to have uh, a sewing machine i would love to try sewing my own like for example project bags or something simple or just like finishing maybe my mm, cross stitch into pillow or something like that i would love to ha try and have a sewing machine for that but so far i haven't really been able to do that uh, so that's just put on the back burner but that is something that i would really love to try in the future I think by now I've probably sped up video quite a bit so I don't know where you're at guys but I'm just attaching my um, my organza the, the next layer of, of organza and I decided to use that brown organza for um, for the path so you may have already seen that I'm not sure but um, yet yeah, so that the, well, the brown kind of orangey organza I'm decided I'm going to use it for the path so I'm just attaching it uh, down where the path is As you see it's quite fun you know being able to just experiment and and just like kind of um decide by yourself where you want things to be and how you want them to lie um you know it's it's a very free thing um how you decide to plan things and how you decide to place them on this um on this canvas uh, so i really like having that freedom of how to do this it's worth remembering as well that what you decide in the end will largely be covered by stitching so the edges and, and you know the different bits they don't have to be perfect um, and it will still look all right i think even if if there are some small bits sticking maybe in places where you weren't planning you know um that's still okay like it should still look really nice in the end um that's what i found with that previous project i was working on that actually it worked out really nicely in the end uh, a lot of that is covered by your stitching and a lot of that is kind of, you know, it's just like it looks fine uh, when you're done. So, so it's not the kind of project where things need to be perfect. I think that's really important to remember that it's okay if some things may not be exactly as you planned. bit of organza that I'm going to attach is that green green organza and again I'm going to probably try and make it a bit more patchy so this is very much improvised where these things are going um, but I'm just going to try and make these green patches uh, which will cover some of the um, maybe like at the bottom of the path uh, I'm also using that that picture as a reference um, so where the green things are in the picture I'm trying to put more of the green background as well and again that will in the end I will stitch that on with a piece of well actually no at uh, this one here I can't really like stitch it on because it will be visible so what I do with the rest of organza I just attach as I attach the other stitches on that will hold the organza in place so I don't have to worry so much about stitching it on I just kind of place different bits of it on for now and just pin it with the pins <laughs>
Okay, guys, so as you see, I've tried my best to attach all these different bits of organza on. It's really improvised. It's really my kind of choice. I, I don't think I've pinned this properly. I need to still readjust this. But as you can see, I have kind of went, you know, just, just followed my own uh, feeling how they, this should be attached and how these different colors should play together. Uh, so this is very, very free, very, you know, up to you how you do this, if you do this. Uh, I also realized that when you fold the organza, you get interesting texture and color effects. So I actually folded some of my green organza on itself, and uh, which gives me like more texture. Um, which I think may be interesting. I don't know. Again, I'm experimenting, uh, but also gives you different shades and also overlapping some of the organza colors give you different shades. So I found that was really interesting. I'm also considering if maybe I should like overlay some of the blue more in some places to get a bit darker sky, for example, like maybe here in the corner, you know, having more of that darker blue would be really nice. So I may actually try and do that. I don't know. I just it just occurred to me that it might be interesting to, to do that as well and uh, just to get a bit of a different effect in the sky. So, yeah, so again, this is very much up to you how exactly you do that. Um, but I think that's the, that's why I'm enjoying about these kits so much is the, the level of creativity that, um, you know, the level of like just, just kind of being able to play with it and, and, you know, play it by ear a bit. Uh, I think it's really, really cool. So yes, I am going to pin that blue. Uh, so I was thinking, I know this is not actually in the, so again, I can't see this in the, on the cover photo, but I well, was in that C kit. Uh, let me see if I can pull that out again. On top here, this is actually water, right? But you had this metallic blue thread that was going through some of it. And um, just adding like some French knots or some beads in the sky could be really cool as well. Um, or I guess you could add clouds if you want. You could, I don't know, try and make clouds with like another bit of like lighter organza or something. So there's lots of things you can do. I may add some French, French notes uh, or beads in the sky as well. I don't know yet. Um, but that's anyway what I ended up with, with the organza. So I will take a break, I think at this point. Uh, but the next thing that I will be doing, so if I follow the instructions, then I give the instructions for all these different leaves um, and flowers that you have to do. So I will have to start attaching some of these flowers. Um, so they they give you these areas on here so that you can orient yourself. Um, they're giving you the thread numbers that you should use for different bits, uh, just as a guide again. So you don't have to use exactly these thread numbers. It's up to you, but they're giving you suggestions. So for example, they say for foxglove leaves, stitch over the printed lines in number four, as number four thread is that lovely green thick kind of yarn um using the thread doubled okay so we're we're going to have to thread it twice through the needle add more stitches over the top in one strand of number 10 so one strand of number number 10 that's the metallic thread and so i'm like i'm not very good with plants but i think judging from the picture and from my very very vague knowledge of uh, plants <laughs> in the garden i think these are fox gloves no these ones here so i think the they're referring to these leaves here to stitch them with two strands of that woolen thread and also see there are these thin lines going through them and i guess that's the metallic thread so that will be what i'll be doing next but i think i may take a break now um i'm actually going to have some lunch and then um at some point i'll come back to it and i'll press the record button again again i may speed it up and just overlay some of the me answering the tag questions on top of the sped up video just so you can see more of the process okay thanks guys hi guys that's me back uh, so now it's we're getting towards the evening so the light has changed and i've put my lights on so i'm not sure well i guess everything will look slightly different but hopefully you can see still see what i'm doing so what i thought i may do now is answer a few more of these questions um that yeah from from the crafty tag i will start working on these um foxgloves right so these plants here uh, as I'm talking to you guys, but then probably I'll just speed up the video and probably once I'm done answering all the questions um, Then I'll just 
probably you know um speed up the rest of the video for you to see uh and then yeah and then i guess hopefully i can show you at the end what it looks like when it's finished um because I, I think it would be cool if you could guys see the whole process. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure if this is interesting for you or not, uh, but since I started recording it, I think it would be nice to see what it looks like when it's finished. So I would really like to include in this video at least what it looks like when I'm done and when it's all framed. So that's the plan. Uh, so yes, so I will now, I have to, I, because I was away, like I was out for a few hours, I've forgotten now what I was doing. Uh, so I need to reread some of the instructions and pick the right thread and so on. And then I'll get started on it again and answer the questions. Right, so I remember where we were. So we were on using that at that point to use that um, funny thread that's kind of like wool. And I was going to double it, so I took the bigger needle, the one, I think that's the one that I had in my last kit, so I found it, I have a little box with my needles. So I'm going to use a, it's a needle with a very big eye, uh, so it should be nice and easy to thread. And so I'm going to start making these leaves, uh, stitching these leaves, and then I'm going to try and answer some more questions. So let me just thread the needle. Um, you may notice that I haven't put it on any hoop. I am thinking about it, whether I should put it on a hoop or not. But honestly, lately I've been stitching a lot in hand and it doesn't bother me too much um, not doing it in a hoop. Um, I have one, but this one may be too big, that I had three. I didn't have any project in this one. Or maybe it will be fine. I don't know. Should I try and use this hoop maybe? And uh, maybe that will help. Uh, just to, to make sure that my tension is all good when I work on this. Right, so I'm just tightening it up a little bit um, just to have good tension all along. Uh, it's a very thick fabric this. It's like a proper canvas type of fabric. I've never had one like this before, I think. Okay. And so I will be stitching over those lines that are drawn in here. Um, so I have to find some a good place to start and then I can start taking some of these pins out as I go along because once I put some threads in, um, then that will hold my uh, organza in place. Um, another thing that I didn't mention before, in this case, I will just make knots at the back, I think, because, um, well, I, I only make like small knots anyway, and um, I think with embroidery it's a bit hard, you, you don't have, it's not like cross stitch, you don't have, I don't know, like, like, you know, you don't have many crosses to kind of to anchor your thread at the back, so I think the safest place to, the safest uh, way of starting or ending the thread is actually by making knots. Um, I mean, I may be wrong about this. Um, if you know of a better way, uh, then let me know, uh, but for now I'm just going to do knots uh, in this case. I'm, they're not going to be very big. This one, this one is slightly big because um, this one actually is, um, is that double thick thread. So this one is slightly on a big side, um, but I think that should still be fine, you know, when later on when I frame it, I don't think there'll be a big issue. Okay, and so I just need to get started and then I can talk to you guys about other things. Okay, so the next question is what craft are you most looking forward to working on later this year? I mean, so what are we now? We're almost in September when I'm recording this. So there's only like three months left or four months left of the year. So it's not so many months. Uh, I am sorry about the noise again. I am very much into my cross stitch at the moment. Um, so it is something that I am very much looking forward to doing more of. Um, so I would say probably cross stitch is top of my list, uh, but that doesn't mean I don't want to do other crafts. Um, I mean, I love all my crafts, so it's really hard to just pick one. Uh, I am very excited to try out 
the new the, the macrame thing just because I'm really curious how that's gonna go uh, but it's more just yeah just curiosity um, and I am really enjoying things like these uh, embroidery kits um, but also like I'm quite excited I have some more ideas for what other things I could make out of the um, crochets or like amigurumi type of things um, so you know so that that also I'm also looking forward to doing some crochet as well so it's really hard to just pick one thing I think that I'm really looking forward to I'm really looking forward to all of my crafts mm, diamond painting is probably at the moment unfortunately it's like at the bottom of my list but also I have projects that I started that I would really like to finish and so I'm really looking forward to finishing them so so that's in a way I'm also looking forward to that um okay so what's the next question so the next question is what is your biggest crafting surprise hmm. <laughs> a biggest crafting surprise oh my goodness that's a difficult question what is a surprise like something that something you didn't expect was gonna happen hmm i don't know guys a surprise mm. I think a surprise for me, in a way, is the fact that I can actually, well, that I can actually do any crafting, to be honest, that's already a surprise. But I think when I first ever started uh, crochet, actually, I bought myself a kit for beginners from the Wee Woolly Wonderfuls. It was the rainbow giraffe that I got. And I really didn't, like, I wanted to do it and I, you know, I bought it and I was really looking forward to it. But I really didn't believe that I was able to do it by like myself because I've never tried any crochet and it looked really hard and I'm pretty clumsy and um, yeah and I struggle with things like that. Um, so I thought oh, yeah, no, I'm probably never going to be able to do it myself. But anyway but I bought the kit and I followed all the video tutorials and I remember actually I was so frustrated because um, I spent all evening just trying to make a magic circle, which is like the very first thing you do when you're making amigurumi, you usually start with a magic circle. And I rewatched the tutorial to make it for, I, I think I rewatched it maybe like 20 times or something, honestly. I, I rewatched it and rewatched it and then I slowed it down and then I, I watched it like every five seconds I would stop it and I would try to repeat what she was doing and I would rewind. And I got so frustrated because every time I tried to make it, I got stuck at the end and I couldn't actually finish it. So that took me like, I think, I don't know, whole evening to finally make a magic circle. And even then I wasn't quite sure how I managed to finally do it. <laughs> and so for me, it was probably like a huge surprise. The fact that I managed to actually finish the giraffe. I actually managed to get the whole thing done. Uh, I may try and insert a picture of the giraffe here so you can see how beautiful she is. Uh, but that was an absolute shock that I managed to do it without having any idea, you know, before I started how to do crochet. Uh, so that was a huge surprise for me. Um, and yeah, I think, I think it's just a surprise in general that I got into crafting because I've always considered myself a very clumsy person. As I said, when I was a kid, I actually, I always... I didn't like these when we had to make something for school, like something that you had to make at home or, you know, it was like a bit artsy or a bit technical. I always struggled with these things. I always felt that I'm rubbish at them. So just being able to do some crafts, um, that's already for me a big, big surprise. I don't know if that's a good answer for this question, that, but that's the only thing I can think of at the moment. Maybe something else will come to me later, so I will add that in. But for now, that's my surprise. Okay. What is your biggest crafting disappointment? Okay, so the biggest crafting disappointment... Mm, well, sorry, my pin has just unpinned, so I need to re-pin re it somehow. Well, I think it was when I initially started diamond painting, uh, I didn't really know very much about where to buy diamond paintings and the different quality of diamond paintings that you had and how do you, how do you select the size of diamond painting. And um, yeah, I just, I generally, I, I wasn't really aware how it all works. And I bought this very big diamond painting because I wasn't sure what size to get and I thought maybe I should get the bigger one but then it ended up it took me forever to finish it 
and it had like these um what you call what do you call them actually um the they're not magic circles what are they called the the circles <laughs> the guide circles uh, it had these guide circles around uh the symbols which meant that on my round i it was round drill kit uh, so my round drills that actually when i placed them on the canvas that you could see these guide circles from underneath and it was a very light image like i really i was really looking forward to doing that image but it was very there was a lot of white and light colors in it and all these circles were coming through and so it took me forever to finish it and in the end i wasn't at all happy with how it looked uh, so that was probably mo my most disappointing project ever i think so because I was, I like, it was there at the very beginning as well. So I was like really excited about it initially. But then I realized quite quickly when I was working on it that actually, oh, it's not so great. But then I didn't want to stop. Uh, I mean, you know, I kind of wanted to finish it. But now I think, you know, it wasn't like, I didn't like it in the end when I finished it. So I should have just stopped much earlier. Uh, but at that point, I was still kind of trying to complete every single project that I started. Yeah, so that's the disappointment. Okay, what is your favorite craft supplier? Okay, so that depends on which craft we are talking about, really. Uh, because if we are talking about diamond painting, um, my favorite craft supplier... Um, sorry, I've le I left my scissors somewhere. I just need to pick my scissors up. Okay, so if we are talking about diamond painting, my favorite craft supplier, I think, is still Diamond Art Club because it's the most reliable... Um, supplier out there always with good quality and with brilliant customer service so you really even if something goes wrong they're they're going to be out there to help you so I think yes Diamond Art Club would be my answer for that um, there are other diamond painting companies that I really like but yeah definitely Diamond Art Club is top of my list at the moment okay um, how about, okay, how about other crafts? So if we are talking about cross stitch, um, then in the UK, I think my favorite supplier is still Lakeside Needle Crafts because you can get a lot of things on their website, like a lot of different fabrics, a lot of different floss, a lot of different charts uh, and accessories. So they're very... Uh, versatile and yeah they, they have a lot of things in stock um, and they're also pretty fast with shipping um, and they have good customer service as well so Lakeside Needle Crafts is probably top of my list but I also there's also a couple sorry about the noise there's also a couple other suppliers in the UK uh, for cross stitch that I really like um, one of them is Patchwork Rabbit uh, so Patchwork Rabbit is really good for charts, um, for, which are maybe the more tradition, traditional kind of um, sampler or um, or things like Theresa Cogut or um, Hello from Liz Matthews or, you know, so, some of these other um, cross stitch designers that are not on Lakeside Needle Crafts. You can find them on Patchwork Rabbit. Uh, the only issue with Patchwork Rabbit is that um, even though they have selection of fabrics and floss and charts, uh, quite often their items are out of stock So this, and their website can be a bit difficult to browse because a lot of items are always out of stock. Uh, so I just find it a bit more frustrating, but you can, they're super fast with shipping, so I really like that. And then another one which is really good is Peakside Needleworks. Uh, Peakside, I think it's Peakside Needleworks, no? I think so. Uh, but Peakside Needleworks is a very good supplier also for charts, um, lots of different charts on there um, and also they have some fabrics and floss as well. Uh, so these are, in the UK we don't really have very many shops and we don't have LNS as in the US, uh, so we have much more limited suppliers, um, but they are my top three to go to, as well as I have some like favorite sellers on eBay and Etsy for fabrics and some other accessories. Okay, um, in terms of crochet, I'm a very beginner crochet, so I don't really buy that much stuff. I found that you can have, there's a good selection of different yarns and, and also of even cross stitch fabrics, like, uh, for example, different colors of linens, uh, like Belfast or Edinburgh, uh, you can get them there as well. It's on wool warehouse. So they're quite good for, they're quite good for like floss. Then you can also get DMCs there. Um, floss and uh, fabric and the yarns as well. 
So these are my main suppliers. Um, okay. This is making a really funny noise, by the way, because the, <laughs> the needle is so thick and then the yarn is so thick. And then I'm trying to get it through this very, very thick canvas and it just feels really weird, but I have to somehow get it through. So maybe that's why you need the hoop for this. I think if I was trying to do it in hand, I would really be struggling. And I keep pulling, so I keep trying to get my the tension even better on, on it because, yeah, I think it helps to get the needle through. Ow. Just stabbed myself with, any, with the one of the pins. Okay. Right, so let's keep going. Mm. What crafting tool would you not want to be without? Hmm. Okay. So I'm just thinking, what, what accessories do I love? Uh, and this is probably not the best craft to, tell, to show you because on here I'm not really... Well, I guess I'm using the hoop. So, you know, it's, I think it's always helpful to have one uh, somewhere, to have a hoop or a Q-snap or something to hold your fabric, just in case if you need it. Uh, as I said, quite often I don't use them. I Quite often I just stitch in hand, um, but they can help. And especially if you have a very, very high count, like if you're doing cross-stitching and your fabric is very dense, to open up the, the um, holes a little bit, it helps to have a... Um, like a hoop or a Q-snap. Yeah, I can't get it through. <laughs> um, and another thing that I love in terms of needleworks, like the cross stitch, um, I love uh, needle minders. I absolutely love having needle minders. Uh, so I wouldn't really want to be without them. And they are so helpful because, you know, I used to just put my needle like, you know, somewhere like in in my like I don't know stack it somewhere in my dress or if I'm in bed I would stick it in the juvie or uh you know in the sofa or somewhere um but th then I would forget where I've actually stuck it or I would lose it and yeah it's just it's really helpful to have the needle minder there though sometimes I lose my needles even with the needle minder uh, so you still have to be careful with a needle minder as well okay um in terms of well, for crochet, for example, I need these little things. Um, I may have one here to show you. Yeah. So for crochet, I use these little markers and they are super helpful because um, you can mark your first stitch. Uh, so if you're going, if you're doing amigurumi, you're going in rounds. Uh, so you can mark your very first stitch um, with the marker. And uh, basically that will help you to orient yourself. So then you know when you finish your round, you can move your marking to the your marker to the next first stitch and that helps you like go to the right place. Okay, so that's for crochet. Now for um, for diamond painting, that's harder because I don't really accessorize when diamond painting. I just, I just take the kit, I just take the, the pen, like any pen, but I, I do like multi-placers. I think my favorite one is four-placer. So that's when you can place um, more than one drill at once. And I love four-placer, it's, it's my go-to, so I usually use four-placer. Even if there's more, if I could use a, a bigger multi-placer, I sometimes do, but I usually come back to four-placer because I just find it more comfortable and just somehow it's easier for me to use the four-placer. What is your go-to drink when crafting? Okay. Um, I don't really have a go-to drink. Uh, I usually just drink water. Unless, well, I quite often... Well, no, to be fair. So, I normally craft in the morning. So, I love... I absolutely love my mornings. I'm a morning person. And I normally get up really early in the morning. And after I get up, if I don't go to the gym, which I, I try recently i try to go to the gym sometimes in the morning uh, but if i'm not going to the gym then the first thing i'll do i'll have a shower and after i've had a shower i sometimes i'll do yoga okay so sometimes I'll, i try and be productive and, and do yoga uh, but if i don't do yoga then the first thing i do after i've had a shower is i do some crafting 
then even if I've done yoga or I've gone to the gym, I come back home or, you know, I, I, I roll my mat down and then I make my, well, I prepare my lunch usually. So I just put some stuff in my lunchbox. And once I'm done with that, I will make a coffee. I will make some breakfast. And as I'm drinking the coffee, I will keep crafting. Yes, yeah, so if I was crafting before, I'll just keep crafting. If I was doing yoga, I will just start crafting. But I always have my coffee in the morning when I craft. And I absolutely love, that's my favorite crafting time. That's when I'm still the least stressed, the least tired. Uh, my mind is, you know, still very bright and working well. And I can really enjoy myself in the morning. So that is my absolutely favorite crafting time. And so I always have a coffee. So you can say, you know, maybe my go-to drink for crafting is coffee. If it is in the morning, of course. Then if I craft later in the day, I usually... Well, either it will be just water or I may make some tea. Uh, sometimes I like to drink like herbal tea or fruit tea or in summer I like to drink iced tea. Um, so depending what season it is and depending how I feel, I may have a cup of tea with me. Occasionally, I may have some wine if it's evening, like, you know, if I finished work and I finished everything I needed to do for the day, I may have a glass of wine with my crafting. But it doesn't happen so very often, just occasionally. Okay, what do you like to listen to whilst crafting? Um, floss tube. <laughs> or sometimes I still have a few, a few diamond painting channels that I follow. And I maybe don't follow them very regularly. It's more every now and then I'll check what videos they've posted recently and I'll watch some of them. Um, but the main thing that I listen to when I, or, or kind of I, I occasionally lift my head and watch uh, when I'm crafting, uh, that will be floss tube because I absolutely love watching floss tube videos. Well, well, it's kind of half watching. It's I'm watching them a little bit, but I'm really listening to them more than watching. But I do lift up my head if, if they if they're showing something that interests me. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay, I want to see that. So, yes, yeah, so that's what I listen to when I craft. Uh, but sometimes I get bored, um, not of the creators, um, it's just sometimes it's too much floss tube and then I need a break from floss tube or I just feel like something else. I feel like I want to watch some TV show, uh, maybe some movie on Netflix and I still, I usually craft, um, especially if I'm alone. So let's say if, if my husband was here, um, if we're watching a movie, I will probably just watch it with him because he feels more than like I'm actually keeping him company and we're enjoying it together. Unless if I get bored with the movie, then I'll pick up my cross stitch in the middle. I'm like, okay, I'm bored with it now. I'm just going to stitch and, and listen to it. <laughs> but if it's a good movie, I'm probably just going to watch with him. If I'm alone, um, I'm most likely going to still stitch. And I can, I, I, I can follow movies quite well, even if I'm only half watching them. Um, so again, unless it's a very good movie that I really got into... And um, then I may put my crafting down, but generally I don't struggle watching and crafting at the same time. So I generally tend to do both. Uh, so I do watch Netflix when I craft as well. Um, and sometimes, you know, it may be listening to radio or, or I don't know. I think I may start listening to some audiobooks as well. I think that would be nice to do when I craft. So that's that really. I think I need to f end this thread because I kind of got to the end of it. So I'm almost there with the green bits. Um, <laughs> I need to, I've, I don't know how I'm going to make this video. I need, really need to think about this because I'm showing you stuff again. But I <laughs> I almost finished the, the green and the leaves here. So I just have a few more left. So I just need another um, strand, not even a full strand. I just need a little bit of that green, green fuzzy uh, wool. And then I'll finish these uh, lovely leaves here. So let me do that. I may stop talking for a bit and just do that. And maybe maybe I'll speed up finishing these leaves and then and then I'll continue on the crafty tag. Okay, so now I'm just gonna grab this metallic thread um, 
because I think the next thing is to use, well, I don't know now how many strands, but you've seen the instructions if it explains. Just one strand of that metallic thread. Oh, so I may try and find my smaller needle again, uh, because this one feels really thick for this fabric. Uh, so I'm struggling a bit to actually put it through the fabric. So I have some smaller needles in my little box, uh, so I can just use one of them uh, if it's just one strand. And I'm not exactly sure where I should be putting it, so I think this is kind of up to me where exactly I've put it. Um, from the image on the cover, I can see that it kind of goes just like vertically up here. Uh, so I'm just going to put it through for, I don't know, everywhere where I think my actual, like the, the flowers will start. So we'll have a few of these flowers going up here. Uh, so I will just try and put a few of these um, stems. So I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely hate threading metallic threads through needle. Uh, so this one is just the DMC one, I think, because I've had DMC metallic thread before and that's what it felt like. Uh, so I think this is also just a DMC metallic thread. Um, but it's just very slippery and, and um, when it kind of splits into multiple little threads. Um, so this one wasn't as bad, but quite often it's quite hard to thread metallic thread. Um, so it's not my favorite thing. And the DMC one, I find this, it can be sometimes a bit difficult to work with. Especially, I think in that last kit, they actually asked me to make French knots with metallic thread and that was not so much fun. Definitely not. So again here, I'm not exactly sure where these should be going. <laughs> so we have to improvise a little bit and just, just, again, it doesn't have to be perfect, guys. Honestly, this is not the point. The point is not to be perfect. The point is to have fun. Um, so just remember that. Okay. Um, I have a little bit of fuzz. So these organzas, they do fray a little bit, um, but I think, you know, it's okay. They can fray slightly, but I just, it annoys me a little bit. I have a bit of fuzz around here. Okay. Okay, guys, so I finished the leaves here on the foxgloves, that's where I am now. Uh, so now I will have to move on to the flowers from the foxgloves. So don't worry, I'm not gonna show you, like, I don't think it's possible to show you every single bit, but I wanted to show you at least the beginning of it and then I will show you the end as well. Um, but I still have a few more questions to go through, so if you want to, you can, uh, you know, stay on the video and listen to the rest of my answers. I'm just going to show you a few more bits and then I'm going to show you how it looks like when it's finished. Um, okay, so we are still on foxgloves and we're doing flowers. So for flowers, work columns of French knots in number nine, six strands. So it's French knots in six strands of floss. Um, that's pretty big French knots. Um, so that's what when we want to make these like big lines of, so you see them, they're meant to be all made up of French knots. It's so number six. I think that's the variegated DMC. Uh, as you work upward, also use number seven, six strands or three, sta three strands. So again, you can choose depending how big your flowers you want to be. You may want to make some smaller ones or some bigger ones. Um, do a few flowers in number eight. Scatter pink beads on printed dots. Scatter a few sequins if you wish. Refer to photo. So again, they give you a lot of flexibility. So I just wanted to demonstrate that to you, how it works, just so that you know. And um, But basically you can decide how big you want your flowers to be, whether you want to use seconds, whether you want to use beads. So there's a lot of freedom. Sorry about the noise. There's a lot of freedom in how you do it. Uh, so I just wanted to show you that. Another thing that I'll be doing later that I saw that looks really cool, I uh, see these flowers here. That will actually be done with this little, remember that little piece of fabric that I, that I had, that one? Uh, so you're using, you're cutting out small circles from that fabric and you're sticking them on and putting like a French knot in the middle, I think. 
so that's really cool as well so it's quite a big project so i'm not going to show you everything um because it's i think it's actually bigger than the one i did last time so it will probably take me even longer but i'm going to speed up some of it i'm going to show you some of it as i work on it and then at the end i will show you how it looks like when it's finished so this video kind of keeps evolving as i keep working on it but i hope you're still enjoying it guys Okay, so because my French notes will be done with six strands of floss, at least to start with, uh, and number four, no, that was none, it wasn't number four, was it? It was number nine and number seven, and then number eight. So they're saying, make a, start with this one, start with the dark one, then you can do some with number eight, no, then you can do some with number seven in six or three strands, and then you can also use this, it's another fuzzy kind of yarn you can also make french knots with that one as well so that you get lots of different textures and colors in them so i'm going to start with number nine as they advised um and i don't know yet how exactly that's going to work and i'm also not so very good with french knots but hopefully that'll be all right because they're done with six strands i'm using a larger needle so i'm using the one with the big eye again and so I'm not splitting my yarn, I'm just going to thread it as it is. Uh, so that's a lot of, that's a very thick piece of, of thread. Sorry, I think I said yarn, but I actually meant thread. And yes, it is variegated, so it's kind of lighter pink on one kind of in here, and then it gets darker again. So it's this one. You can see the variegation, hopefully. Okay. And again, I'm just going to put a knot at the end, because uh, I think it's the easiest way to start it. Okay, so let's say just as an example, and this is probably going to be a really bad example because I'm not so very good with French knots. I just kind of wing them as I, as I go and they don't always turn out well. Sometimes I have to undo them, but hopefully this one will be fine. So I'm thinking there's a little dot here, so I'm going to try and put French knot in here and see how big it will end up being. Some of them may be a bit looser, some of them a bit tighter, but I, th I think in this case that's nice. Uh, so that's why I feel quite um, happy about doing French knots in this case um, because it's not like they don't have to be perfect. They can also, like like flowers, some of them are open fully, some of them are kind of more, you know, they, some of them are kind of maybe old flowers, some of them are young flowers, or, you know, it's, it's uh, so it doesn't really matter. Some of them are pointing a different direction, so I think that'll be all right again so if you've never seen how to do french knot this is the worst demonstration ever but just in case if you want to see that's probably not going to work out um, but the way you do it you so you have your floss in the front and then you you wrap it well i usually do actually three times and if i wanted a really big flower so i may even maybe try four times but i'm going to start with three times and then i keep my floss tight with my uh, left hand and then i try and put my needle back more or less where I put it initially now that more or less is because I don't often manage to put it exactly where I started then I still hold on to my floss on this side um, and then I try to put that very thick needle through my fabric which is not going very well is it so that needle is a bit too thick for what I'm trying to do but let's let's see how it <laughs> I can't do it guys it's too fake ah I told you this was going to be the worst demonstration in the world I may try and use a smaller needle if I can thread it through a smaller needle I may use a needle threader actually because this may not work to be honest with that needle it's actually stuck I think it's stuck so this is not going well at all yeah I'm really struggling guys with this one Whoa, did you hear that? <laughs> so I think I somehow managed to get the metallic thread tangled in. I don't know how this happened. I'm just going to trim it. Okay, so it's slightly sparkly, but it is a French knot. It took forever. It's not normally this hard, but this canvas is very thick and my needle is very thick. And the French knot is done with six, fran six strands, so it's very thick as well. Uh, so, but this is what it looks like when it's done. It's not normally that hard. Now I'm wondering if I can do it with a smaller needle, but I don't know if I have the right kind of needle for this. Mm. Let me have a look. 
Okay, so with the help of this very basic needle threader that I've got here, which somehow survived this and didn't fall apart, uh, I managed to thread a smaller needle. Um, so let me try again <laughs> with a smaller needle, <laughs> see if that works better. <laughs> but I don't know, I think it's also the floss that's very thick and the canvas, so the, the French knots are a bit of a nightmare too, I have to say guys, it, it's, it's gonna be hard. But let me try. Oh. I can already even this is hard. It's the, the actually it's the floss rather than the needle. Actually in this needle it's even harder to pull now because it's so thin. So I'm not I'm not expecting this to work. But let's try again. So one, two, three. Okay. And I'm just going to put it back more or less where it started. I hold on to my thread with my left hand. I try to keep it I as tight as I can. Yeah, but it's not the needle. I just realized it's actually the the floss that's too thick for what for the canvas. So this is becoming really difficult. Hmm. Oh, but it went through. Okay, it went through. Right. Okay. So this is my second French knot. So that's how it goes. Now I'm not going to make you sit through this because this is going to take a long time. These French knots are hard work, I tell you that. And my hand is going to be dead once I'm done with it. Uh, <laughs> probably if they gave me slightly thinner canvas that would have really helped. Because this one is a little bit too thick for what we need to do. Uh, but that's okay, that's okay. Uh, we'll manage. Uh, I'll hopefully maybe if I use like a cloth or something to try and pull my needle. Uh, it will hopefully be okay in the end. And sorry, I just bumped the camera. It's just all getting too complicated. Okay, so I may just speed up the French knot bits, uh, French knots bit for you, just so you don't have to watch me do this. And as I do that, maybe I'll try to answer another question as well. Maybe that will keep me distracted. So the next question is, what other hobbies do you have? Okay, so what other hobbies do I have? Well, which are not crafts, I'm guessing. So, I mean, I don't really have that much time for other hobbies these days. I wish I did, but um, I honestly don't even have enough time to do all my crafting these days. So other hobbies, I kind of have, they, they have to, they've been put on the back burner. I used to read a lot when I was younger. But somehow I've lost passion for reading. I think it's because I did a PhD and when you do a PhD you constantly read stuff. And then when, you're, when you work as a scientist you also constantly read stuff. Uh, so it's quite a lot of reading that you do in a day already. Um, that's related to your work. So then when you come home you really don't want to be reading again. Uh, because it's just too much reading in a day. Uh, so because of that... Um, yeah, I don't tend to read that very much anymore. Um, but I I think the biggest passion of mine, my biggest hobby was always my violin. Uh, that's something that I always loved doing. Um, and I used to, uh, as I think I said earlier, when I used to live in Scotland, um, they have a very big amateur music scene. Uh, so there's a lot of orchestras, a lot of ensembles. Um, that do uh, just that kind of amateur um, orchestras and stuff um, where you can join in and you can just perform and you can invite your friends to the concerts and you know it's a lot of fun and um, then also yeah I used to play at weddings and yeah I was I used to play a lot of music and then I also used to tutor violin which now I also I have one student now um, even when I was in Cambridge even though I didn't do much music performance I had one lovely um lovely violin student uh she was an italian lady well she was uh she was an english lady but her father was italian and so she she had these italian origins and she was so fun i absolutely loved she was like one of my best friends there so the lessons were really just fun for me um to do as well so i really enjoyed that um yeah so that was that so so yes a violin playing um music performance that was always something that i enjoyed and that was probably my main hobby outside of crafting but again i don't have that much time these days to do it uh sometimes i'll find time uh you know just to play some violin and yeah occasionally i have lessons 
uh, with my student. But other than that, um, yeah, I don't really play so much these days. Um, it's just I rather do other things. Uh, I think I reached a level when there wasn't very much, like, it's, it's hard to progress at, after a certain point. You just kind of stay on one level because I've learned kind of as much as I could learn. And then after that, you, you know, I, I would have to put a lot of practice in to improve and... There wasn't much point in and you know it would take hours and hours of practice a day and i didn't have that kind of time or motivation so i kind of i guess it kind of got left out a bit um yeah but i've always loved it and music um so i love classical music i am very passionate about it um i love listening to it i love playing it um i love talking about it and um, yeah and there's, there's so many composers i adore and um, I love going to concerts and stuff. So so yeah, that and and I guess that's another hobby. I love going to concerts or theater. Though I don't do enough of it, but I love uh, I love arts in general. I love going to galleries and stuff. I love seeing art in different forms. Okay, guys, I did have to stop the video for a little bit because I was really struggling with the French notes, but I repositioned myself and I, I was doing it kind of nearer to me, and I am getting the hang of it. I had to switch back to thick needle because you know what happened to the very thin needle, it got bent. It was really hard to use the very thin needle, it, it got ruined in the process. Uh, so now I'm back to the thick needle and actually I'm managing to pull it through the fabric, it's alright. It's not as hard as I thought initially, so it's not too bad. So I'm just gonna keep going with the French knots. Um, and maybe try and answer another question and then um yeah and then we're gonna start wrapping up this video because it's getting very long isn't it so there's a question if i looked in your bag would there be any evidence that you're a crafter um probably not to be honest i do occasionally carry my cross stitch with me if i think i'm gonna have time to stitch either at work or let's say if I'm traveling or I don't know, I'm gonna be on a train for a while or I think I may pop into a coffee shop and I, I may wanna stitch, then I will ha will take some small cross stitch project with me, but um, that doesn't happen that often. So I normally don't have anything crafty in my handbag, to be honest, as disappointing as it may be, guys. The next question is, what craft related item do you have too much of? Um, well, that's an easy one. So I have way too many diamond paintings um, for what I can actually do. Uh, I did go through a phase of buying a lot of diamond paintings. I just couldn't control myself and I kept they kept releasing new ones or I just wanted to buy more and more. Uh, so I built up a big stash of diamond paintings and now uh, because I don't do that much diamond painting, I don't actually I'm not actually able to work through this stash. I have too many for what I can actually do, which is a bit dis disappointing, I guess, but you know. I've got them now at least, so now that I don't have a lot of money to buy more diamond paintings, at least I have this very big stash of diamond paintings that I've accumulated previously. So at least I have that, at least I'm never going to run out of diamond paintings, uh, <laughs> I think, so that's a good thing. I also pr probably have too many cross-stitch charts for what I can actually do in my lifetime, um, but I want to keep buying more, I, I just can't stop myself from buying more cross-stitch charts. Um, yeah, <laughs> so that's but at least they don't take as much space as, as diamond paintings. They just take and, and they also they don't cost as much as diamond paintings. It's more like then when you want to kit up, you want to buy fabric, you want to buy floss, and that all costs, uh, you know, quite a bit of money as well. Uh, but uh, you know, just the cross stitch charts, they're not so big and also they're they're not as expensive. Okay, I'm getting to the end of this thread, so I'm going to have to change thread again. But as you see, these French notes are coming along nicely now. So I've I got a hang of it now. So initially I thought maybe the, the fabric was too thick and the needle was too thick. But I think now my fingers are a bit sore, uh, but I'm doing it. You know, it's happening. It's happening. Um, yeah, I may just try to do one last French knot and then I'm going to change thread here. So I'm actually going to pick that different thread color now. So I'm going to go with number seven. Um, and I'm going to go still with six strands, I think. Um, I don't know, should I go with three? No, I think, 
Maybe I should go with a different number. Maybe I should go with like four or something. Should I go with three strands or are they going to be too small? I don't know. I may start, I may do a few in six and then I may do another few in three strands. Okay guys, look, 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 look. I'm done with the French knots. Well, on here at least. There's there's more to come later. Uh, so all these blue flowers here are also French knots. Though there's a bit less of them. And then there's some French knots here in the middle of these flowers and also on the tree. Uh, but I'm done with this massive section of French knots that was, well, Quite an experience, though not as bad as initially I thought it was going to be. Uh, I did get a hang of it, but it took a while to get all these French knots done. Some of them, you can see those in the bottoms are quite large. So these are the ones that were done with six strands of floss. And I did them, most of them I did by three turns over my needle. Um, then I have some smaller ones, which I did with two turns on my needles or some that I only did with one. Um, and also some of the, the ones up here are done with uh, like three strands of floss and some of them are done with that yarn type of thread. Uh, and some of them are only one turn up here and I pull them quite hard from the back so that they, they go pull it a little bit into the fabric so they're really small. Okay, but so that's really how it looks. Uh, I think that looks pretty good in the end. A little bit different, so, so they were meant to be more straight pointing up. Mine ended up being very thick and pointing a little bit in that direction. Well, I say it's because it's windy um, and the wind is blowing that direction. So mine are a little bit on the wonky side um, because of the wind. Um, but um, also they maybe are a bit thicker than they should have been. But I did my best uh, and I think they still look pretty good as they are. I'm still happy with them. And I think when it all, when I finish everything, it will look very nice. Um, I think this video is already very long, so I'm not going really to keep you guys longer. Um, I am going to probably have a break anyway, uh, but the next thing to do is add some sequins um, in that bit next to French notes where I have these big circles here. So we have these sequins, like the, the purple ones. Uh, so I'm going to try and, and basically place them. This one's upside down. <laughs> it doesn't want to turn the right way up. Or maybe it is like this, or maybe it's just like that. Uh, so, so some of them are more shiny, apparently, and some of them are not so shiny. Or maybe I'm just being really stupid. No, this one is not shiny on either side. That's interesting, okay. And some of them are really shiny. Um, so we've got these really shiny ones, but this one's quite big, I don't know. I need to think how to. So I can also use some beads. If I think the seconds may be too, too big for like here, for example, I could use some beads. So I have some lovely pink beads. Uh, so I will play around with that and then I will meet you at the very end when I'm finished with everything. I will show you the end product. Um, uh, hopefully this gave you a nice overview how these kits from Rwandian embroidery work and also possibly how you can do your own embroidery. Um, you know, the different things that you can use uh, in case if that's something that you are interested in. And hopefully you enjoyed me answering the tag questions. I only have really one more that I wanted to answer. And uh, there's one that I'm going to skip because it's just too hard. So this one is asking uh, which uh, which other channels um, do you enjoy the content of? And really, I would have to list a very long list of channels. And I don't want to accidentally miss anybody because I watch a lot of different channels and I appreciate a lot of different creators and I think it would be really really hard for me to answer because there are just so many and I always try to mention them when I refer to them or when I remember during my other videos I always try to mention them and then tag them in the description below as well for you guys to check out so I will keep of course doing that but I can't just give you a few names now because I think that would be harming some people that I will not 
say and and like like you know some names that i will not say i think you know this the list is very long so i will skip that question and then at the end of the video i will answer the last question hi guys well, it's me again. It's not quite the end yet, but I just wanted to show you the progress I've got so far. I mean, I'm going to show you the whole thing at the end anyway, but I just wanted to mention a few points. So I've been working on it for quite a few hours. Well, I worked on it a little bit last night and a little bit this morning. Sorry, there's my hair on it. So let me just pull it out. Okay. And this is what I've got. Uh, so I've made a few changes. Uh, so I think last time you saw it, I didn't yet have the sequins on. So that's where I was. Uh, so I've attached those. And then I decided to attach, attach some beads over here and then here as well. Then I decided to make some changes to the sky. And I actually added a little cloud here, which is like a blue cloud. And I added some French knots in metallic thread in here. Then I thought, oh, it'd be nice to have like a lighter cloud on this side. And I actually, I because I didn't know there was going to be a um, sky organza for the sky included with the kit. So I actually ordered some very light blue organza, which actually kind of looks almost white. And so I used that. Uh, so it's almost, it's like a very, very lightish blue organza. And then I thought it would be so nice to have French knots in silver thread, in silver metallic thread. And I didn't have a DMC metallic thread in silver, but I found Cranic. Um, so it was just a number four Cranic uh, in, I, I don't know the shade, but it was just a silver one. So I added some fresh notes here in the cloud. Um, then I continued working on those plants. I don't have the flowers yet and uh, because these are actually that's why I wanted also to like to stop the video here or to, to restart the video here. Uh, it's because I'm quite excited about adding those stitches here. So I just wanted to mention them to you guys. Uh, but first thing I'll do, I'm actually going to go ahead and add there's a bunch of French knots here that um I'm, I'm actually i think in the kit they mistakenly gave me more of this floss which i used to for the gate uh, but they didn't give me blue like a really nice blue floss but on the picture here they use blue floss so i just decided to use seven uh, a color dmc color 797 and i'm just going to do some um they describe it as loose french knots so they're meant to be quite open so I'm going to try and do some more open French knots here. And then I'm going to try and add a few stitches here. These are some new stitches I haven't done before. So I'm quite excited to do that. Uh, other things that I've done uh, this morning was added some more yellow organza on the sides here to add a bit of kind of brighter color. So I folded it a couple of times. So it's a very nice and bright. I've also added these stitches here on the path. And um, it's all coming along really nicely. I can like pre-show you guys. So I'm kind of every now and then I'm checking with, with the mount. Uh, but look, 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 guys. It's looking pretty awesome, isn't it? <laughs> I'm very, very excited about this. So I thought, uh, just in case, if you guys want to hang around and um, watch me do it in a sped up version, I may just add these flowers here with you guys there. Um, and just maybe add some music in the background and then in the end I will show you the, the finished thing maybe. I don't know. I kind of wondered if maybe I should also record putting on these flowers here because they will be quite exciting. So I haven't decided yet but for now I'm just going to add these flowers here with you guys here. Okay guys, so just in case if you're curious about French knots, uh, one thing that I noticed, I've had quite a bit of practice with French knots um, over the past couple of days working on this project, uh, and I have learned, you know, a thing or two about them. They are a bit of a pain, but they're actually not as bad as you may initially think. Uh, so I'm just trying to pull this one through, they a little bit hard sometimes with this very thick canvas especially. Okay, but so if you want to make your French knots a little bit looser, um, generally I think I think what the solution is is when you see so when you wind. Oh, sorry, when you wind up your thread on your needle, and I'm doing it three times in this case because I want them to be nice and big. But when when you wind up your thread on your needle, 
Um, I think the trick is to not pull too hard on this um, this piece that you're you're holding of your left hand on this piece of thread that's sticking out of your knot. If you pull very hard on it, the knot is going to get quite tight, which is quite often what you want. But in this case, because we want to keep them a little bit on the looser side, I'm just kind of letting it go. So I'm not actually holding on to it all the time. I'm just occasionally giving it a bit of a tug, um, but I'm not holding on to that piece of thread. Uh, so that way the, the French knot becomes kind of more, more open. Uh, so that's a nice effect as well. And that's what these uh, these projects have been really nice for, is learning the differences. So you can really experiment with what happens when you, you know, when you pull too tight, when you pull too, when, when you leave them loose and, and, you know, when you make it big, when you make it small. Uh, so it's all been a really nice experiment for me, learning all these things. Uh, so I really like that about these projects. So how do you guys feel about doing French knots? Do you like them? Do you hate them? Have you ever done one? Um, a lot of cross stitch projects don't have French knots. Uh, I think they're more common in embroidery, but I've, I've had it in cross stitch projects before and that's how I learned them in the first place, is by doing them in cross stitch. I think they're much easier if you're working with a standing frame. Um, I don't have a frame. Uh, I've never worked with a frame, so normally I hold my hoop in one hand. Ah, I can't get this knot through. Uh, normally I ha hold my uh, hoop with one hand and then uh, with the other hand I do stitching. And so, so that's alright for cross stitch, but actually uh, when you're doing French knots you kind of need to hold on to that piece of, you know, it really helps to, to have two hands available. So it gets a bit tricky if you're only doing it one-handed. Okay guys, finally something that I really wanted to try is this detached chain stitch, which I don't think I've ever done before. Uh, so I watched a little quick video tutorial yesterday how to do it, so hopefully I can do it. Uh, so this is to make these um, flowers these ones here uh, so they're kind of like a chain and you see that on top they're like pinned on top so that's what I'm going to try and do uh, so so the pin kind of goes to on opposite sides to where your needle goes I think so I'm not sure we're going to have to experiment a little bit with that one but I'm going to try one so basically I'm going to start in the bottom so let's say if I start with this one because it looks like a straightforward place to start Okay, so I think what I need to do is kind of like loop my loop my thread <laughs> like this, sort of, I think, and then go back in, in the same place where I started, I think, and then, well, I need to make my loop just big enough as much as I want it, and that's, I think that's the tricky part. How do you know when to stop looping it? <laughs> I don't know guys, I don't know. Oh, I'm pulling it too far now, possibly. Yeah, and it doesn't it doesn't look very even. I don't know. My threads are splitting. So I'm doing it with three threads and they seem to be splitting a bit, so I'm a bit concerned about that. I don't I may just try again. I don't like this one. Okay guys, so I'm trying again. Trying again. So <laughs> I'm trying to make a loop and hold on to the loop. Just, I don't know, let's try this again. Put my needle back where I started. Yeah. And now this is going the way. Okay, let's try that. Where's my needle? I've lost my needle. There it is. Okay. And so now when I'm holding the loop, I should try and, let's say, put my needle where I want my pin to be. So, let's see here. And then I pull it through... Okay, that's better, that's better. And so now I just need to pin it on the top and I just go back to, go back through the fabric. Oh, okay, that worked. Yay, that worked. Okay, one more time. We can do this, we're le learning something new. I think these are called also lazy daisy stitches. Or in this case, they call it detached chain stitch. 
Uh, right, so I'll just make a big loop for now and just hold on to it with my finger. It will be so much easier with a frame, guys. Maybe I should invest in a frame. I don't really have space for all these things that I want to buy. <laughs> I need a bigger flat, guys. <laughs> okay. So, okay, so we have a nice loop. And now I think this one, I want to end somewhere here-ish. Here. So let's go. Oh, maybe a little bit too small. Oh, well, it'll be okay. It doesn't matter if it's slightly smaller, no? It's a smaller flower. Oh, I think it's nice. So I'll just keep working on these as well. And that way I'll, I'll have these flowers done as well. Which is amazing. I think doing projects like this um, is a great way of practicing your embroidery skills in a very relaxed way. And because it's really hard to go wrong, so it's very low pressure kind of environment and you get to practice all sorts of things. You get to practice different stitches, learn some new stitches maybe, and you also get to like learn some beading. Um, yeah, it's like, I think it's a really good way of practicing uh, embroidery skills. So I, f I find it really helpful. Um, and I think you could even like try and make something of your own if you buy your own supplies if you can be bothered to like i think one day i may try that as well if you can be bothered to get your own you know your own fabric your own organza your own um beads and uh, threads and stuff yarns then you can i guess invent your own projects uh, you know you can kind of make art with this which i think is super super cool and i think i'd really love to experiment with that one day as well Okay guys, so as you may have seen, I've finished, I've completed these flowers, the, the French knots and these flowers, the, the daisy stitches or whatever they're called, uh, lazy daisy. <laughs> and so now I'm, you know, I'm getting really close to being, you know, done. It's only a few more things that I'll need to do. Uh, so I will have a break again. Uh, but uh, maybe maybe when I'll be doing these flowers, I may record another little section, I'm not sure. Or if not, I'll just show you when I'm completely done next time. Um, so one thing that I still need to add is this little pinky thing at the bottom. Uh, so kind of I need to figure out a way to coil it around here uh, to make these kind of pink things in the bottom. Uh, I also need to add some beads around and then I also of course have to make the, the tree and these these lovely flowers with, with this fabric. Uh, so that's what I've still got to do. Um, but I'm almost there, almost there guys. Look, 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 look. Yay! That's so amazing, I'm so happy. <laughs> Okay guys, it's time for the great reveal. <laughs> I'm finally done. Uh, so I decided to just power through. I wasn't feeling so great yesterday. So when I was finishing it and I was like, you know, struggling already to do this. So I didn't record any more segments. Probably better for you because you're probably already very bored with this video. But I just wanted to show you the end result of my garden gate kit from the Rwandian embroidery. Okay, dum da da dum Yay! It's all done and framed. It took me quite a bit of time, well, first of all to finish it, but then also to position it in the frame. It's, you know, it was quite a bit of faffing around trying to move it and get it just right. Because as you can see, I was right at the edges with my stitching, so, you know, <laughs> I didn't have a lot of room to maneuver.
basically I was trying to squeeze in as many things as I could in this small space uh, so I finished all the flowers I finished these lovely flowers um, which were made of that little satin fabric so basically I just cut out small circle kind of shapes from that fabric they're not even circles but I think that's actually kind of nice uh, some of them are smaller some of them are larger and then in the middle of each circle you have a French knot. I also finished this this bush and that bush took me forever. It was really a lot of work. Uh, I think I've done it a lot denser. So the stitching here, the green stitching is a lot denser than what it was on the cover and uh, the cover photo. Uh, but I wanted it to be nice and like really proper kind of bushy, you know, very, very dense kind of thick, thick green bush. So, so that's what I, I think I managed to achieve. Um, and then I put a lot of seconds and beads here. Uh, so on the on the actual the original photo, they didn't have that many things here. They had these lazy daisy stitches and a few beads as well. Uh, but I I didn't really I struggled a bit with these lazy daisy stitches. They weren't very even. Um, the the threads were splitting. So to kind of to cover it up, I put a lot more sequins and stuff, uh, so that you can you can hardly see them to be honest. So so that should be fine. And then I coiled all this funny, woolly, flossy thing uh, around here. And I think it looks super cool. I really love it. Um, so yeah, and I like how this yellow is, is kind of coming through here. I think it gives it a really nice color. Um, so yeah, that's basically it done. I hope you like it, guys. I realized that in a few bits of the video, I was really struggling to know um, how to do this. And, and also I was struggling with like recording some of the bits and, and you know, I didn't realize how thick the fabric was going to be. So my French knots demonstration wasn't good at all. So I'm going to have to see how I can patch everything up together. I may have to cut some things out from what I recorded, but I will try to keep most of it in um, and try and make some sensible video out of this. I'm not sure right now it kind of it looks really really messy to me all the different bits I recorded and I'm not sure how I'm going to patch it all together and if it's going to be any good for anybody to watch uh, but I will try my best but at least you get to see it guys yay <laughs> okay well I hope you enjoyed this video Oh yeah, I know. I was going to answer the last, the very last question of the Crafty Dagno. Uh, so the very, well, the very last question for me that I wanted to answer is what's your top crafty tip? And I think actually this, um, this kit here is really, um, is really kind of demonstrating <laughs> my, my crafty tip. Uh, so, so basically I think in crafting it's important to just be you and do you and just let yourself like let yourself be creative um like don't don't worry too much about being perfect i think that's the tip like don't worry about being perfect because this is not perfect this is not even looking like what it looked like on the cover and you know you could see how i struggled how i was like discovering how to do this and you know this video is not perfect it's not a tutorial video it's just me being real trying to work on this with you guys and I think that's important in crafting like just be you just just experiment just just enjoy the process and don't try to be or you know if, if you can try to be perfect but don't worry if you're not perfect basically uh so that's just that's all i wanted to say at the end uh again i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please hit the uh the like button underneath um the thumbs up button and and if you're not subscribing yet but you think you might like it here then please consider subscribing okay guys um um, well, it was lovely speaking to you today. Uh, have a lovely day or lovely evening wherever you are in the world. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye now.